Yeah, I've definitely seen a lot of that ever since we've decided to go the business route. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see web design in the future as far as different things coming up such as drag and drop for the average consumer mm -hmm. who, just like you said, they don't see the value in what we do when we go and we break apart code to make something work or we might go into a SVG mm -hmm. and import that just to have it scalable. Yeah, They might not see everything like that. They, they don't see, see any of that stuff. They don't care about any of it. They're like, does it work? Yeah. And if it works and it gives them the experience they're looking for, you know, so if you're picking up the phone, whether you're looking at it vertically, horizontally, pick up a tablet, you know, you grab a big phone, you get your desktop, as long as they can look at all their devices and it works the way they expect it to, they're not going to care. You know, it's like, it's really up to us to figure out how can we harness all these things collectively to make that thing the best it can be, whether it's, you know, developing a positive user experience or whether it's uh, trying to make it download fast enough. So if somebody can evaluate whether they want to be there or not. You know, and those few things are seemingly at odds with each other, but they're really not. I mean, like I was in the class I was just, I was just uh, sort of working in, what they're doing right now is they're creating mobile app marketing websites. And so one of the things they're juggling right now, which is one of the things we juggle all the time, and I know you know this, they're juggling kind of overlaying different images and graphics and text on top of other objects that have to scale for different resolutions. And so they're like, you know, they're, they're kind of they're having a hard time wrapping their minds around the fact that they have to think of four different sizes simultaneously when they're doing something. And so one of, one of the, the headaches for them, I think, at the moment is how things are nested and how they have to be nested to work that way. That's the single biggest hurdle that they're running into. And I find that very interesting because I know that you do this, and I see it like that. I can look at it and go, oh, yeah, I know what's going wrong. And, you know, some of that is just a number of years of doing it, frankly. And some of it is an inquisitiveness that I want to know why it doesn't work. You know, there's a lot of people out there who just don't care. They go, that's fine. It works 90%. Then they walk, they do that and walk away, you know. I want to know why it works or why it doesn't work. Because I want to know, did I introduce a context that made it not work? <clears throat> like I ran into something yesterday with Bootstrap, for instance, where a student came in and they had a container and in the container, they had a, uh, a medium eight-column block and a medium four-column block, right? So eight and four is 12, equal distance, mm -hmm. no problem. And instantly, horizontal scroll bar. And the dimensions are right. There's nothing wrong with it at all. And so we had kind of a workaround solution. I was sitting there thinking, well, wait a minute, why is this doing this? So we kind of went to Chrome, went to Inspect Element, Try changing the container from a fix to a fluid container, seeing if maybe that was part of the problem. No. Took the second column that was four columns wide and made it three columns wide, right? So now it's 11. Still should fit. No. Still a horizontal scroll bar. Like there's an extra two columns there that aren't there. And so what I thought was, okay, there's a way to solve this. Mm -hmm. Because the column count should be right. Because you look at the columns by themselves, yeah, they're correct. Because you go and click on the object, it highlights just the object itself. And then you get to the row and it shows the container with the margins. And so my solution was, okay, well, let's go inside of container. Let's wrap it with another row, put one 12 column block in it, and then nest the other two as a row with two columns inside of that. Mm -hmm. Scroll bar is gone. Now, there's nothing that says that you should have to do it that way. That's just kind of, the, of a solution that we figured out on the fly. And sometimes that's what it is. You have, to, you have to think about this enough and you have to be willing to think of how can I solve this without making it worse? You know, because if you can find what the solution is, figure, well, obviously, if you want to figure out figure what the problem is and you can just eliminate the problem, that takes the thing away. Sometimes it's not obvious what's causing the problem. And I'm not, still not quite sure what that problem was caused by, but interjecting another object with the full count eliminated the problem altogether. So sometimes you don't know. Sometimes it's like you have to go, okay, I've never thought of that solution before. Let's see if we can try this. <laughs> so what are your favorite tools when you go about either just d designing a website or actually going into development, like software um, and hardware? Well, you know, there's a few things that I use in my tool set all the time. Obviously, I use Dreamweaver. Um, I also use Sublime Text, Coda, Text Wrangler, um, I use Bootstrap as a framework, so I'm also using jQuery. I'll use Font Awesome. 
uh, obviously I use you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, all the Creative Suite stuff for creating graphics and things that I need. Um, but I also use you know, PHP, MySQL databases, uh, WordPress content management systems, you know, open cart content management for shopping carts or uh, Shopify or um, now Square, the Square Store too. And that's the one thing I, I find the most interesting is that like, you know, you can develop yourself. I have a tool set. And you say, these are the tools that I use all the time. You go back and look at that list two years later and see, are the same tools there? Some of them are, some of them aren't. Because some of them have gone by the wayside. I mean, like, you know, we used to always use uh, Firefox with Firebug mm -hmm. as a browser because of the inspect element. The, the developer tool of Firebug was about, you know, exposing those issues. Well, when Google Chrome introduced their developer tools, at first they were a little weird because it was a, kind of a slightly different methodology. Um, because if you look at Firebug, it looks almost like the developer inspect element in Safari. They're very similar. Now, if you look at Google Chrome, they all look very similar. Mm -hmm. But Chrome's is much faster because it's native in the browser. So if I had to look at it in a sequence, I'd do Chrome first, Safari second, then Firebug third. Because Firebug's not native. So it's an add-on into the browser, whereas in, Fire, in Safari and Google Chrome, they're both baked into the browser. So they work just a little faster. As far as um, scripting languages, mm -hmm. I noticed um, ever since I've graduated, a lot of companies still ask for ASP.NET mm -hmm. and different types of scripting in addition to HTML, CSS, mm -hmm. and PHP. Yep. What type of scripting languages would you say for new graduates are necessary in the job market these days? Well, I mean, one of the reasons that we do like PHP and MySQL is it's the number one set of languages in use on the web. It is by far. Um, because it's also open source and it's free, you can get into using it without spending a lot of money. Now, what you can largely do is, like if you use something like an ID, like Dreamweaver or Eclipse or something like that, um, you can look at how the language packages work and start to evaluate, is this the one that I ultimately want to use? Because, you know, whether it's ASP.NET, JSP, Cold Fusion, ASP, VB Script, or JScript, the old ones, you know, uh, or even PHP, they all have the same idea, that it's a dynamic package of files, that when somebody clicks on something, it queries a database and pulls information, right? And so the thing that we're really focusing on more than, like, here's the language itself is that interaction, how there's a concept of you get sets of data and you do something with them. Because like right there, um, semantically, the terminology is slightly different, right? So if you're doing something in Dreamweaver, you call it record sets. But if you're using uh, uh, like JSP or ASP.NET, you generally say data sets. Same thing, just a different name, right? And so the, the hardest thing at first is realizing that different segments of the industry use different terms at times. Mm -hmm. And it really depends on, you know, what's that shop doing, for instance. So I don't really work with a lot of shops that do ASP.NET because I don't think everything in the world needs to be Microsoft-centric. I think that's a problem because I think it caused us problems for a number of years because it forced us to say Internet Explorer's browser was the number one in the world, which means we had to build five different websites. Now that we kind of say it's one of the browsers and it better do standards-compliant model, and if it does that, then we do one website and it works everywhere. And so I think, uh, you know, beholding yourself to the 800-pound gorilla doesn't necessarily help. Now, the same thing could be said for, well, I'm talking about using a Google tool. They're an 800-pound gorilla as well. Now, their 800-pound gorilla nature is a little different because they're a little more like, well, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Use something else. And if this stops getting adopted, we'll just get rid of it. Whereas Microsoft would go, no, you must use this all the time. How, why would you ever do anything differently? There's, there's a little bit of the hand pounding on the table. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's really interesting. Like we, I was talking to somebody earlier about even just like our payroll system here. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry, my text, my message. Um, Kronos, the payroll system, if you try to do it on anything other than Internet Explorer, mm -hmm. it seems like it's doing nothing and it takes a year. But if you're doing it with Internet Explorer, it's fast. And it's all about the version of Java the Internet Explorer uses. That's all it is. So they've built the back end of this to work with a particular version of Java that Internet Explorer loves. That's why it wants Internet Explorer. So even like 
take like the campus portal getting to eCompanion, mm-hmm. right? If you go there with Internet Explorer, half the time it doesn't work. If you go there with Firefox, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If you go there with Safari, sometimes you get a message saying you can't use this browser. But if you go there with Chrome, 99% of the time nothing happens, and that 1% of the time it goes, this browser's not supported. So there's always an issue. And it's just a matter of working through the issue and keeping saying, this is just a roadblock, I can get past it. So whether even you're just using software or developing something for somebody, that same idea applies. And that never changes. You pretty much answered all of the questions that I had. Okay. And I definitely thank you for everything that has brought me to this point and for all of the advice that you have given for future web developers, current web designers, and everything in between. My pleasure. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And we'll see the viewers again for another creative process. Absolutely. Thank you.